I'm Kevin with Springfield Leather. I am, as you can see, wired for sound, I'm told. Basically, I'm just hoping I don't blow up. Um, today, I want to show folks how, you folks, how to carve a happy little pine tree on a piece of leather. We're going to do a little bit of scenic leather carving, so to speak. If you've ever tried to do any figure carving, most people that have tried that will probably tell you that trees are the weakness. So I'm gonna make that a little bit easier today. Now, it doesn't take a lot of tools. I've got about six here that I use. If you wanna do figure carving, you probably need a total of about 25. But to do what I'm gonna do, make this little scene, mountains and trees, you need about six. This is a 976 tool in case you're taking notes. Here's how you do it. I'm assuming that everybody already knows how to wet their leather. Okay, that's what we have so far. Pretty simple. Now we're gonna kinda, this is where it gets kind of interesting. We're gonna make the inside of the tree, and the way that you do that is by holding the point of this pointy beveler kind of in the center, and then you twist it to the left as you're going to the left side of the tree. You twist it a little bit to the right as you're going to the right side of the tree. And you have to kind of chop it a little bit, like this. It'll be a little difficult to see, but you kind of get the idea. And one thing above all else is for heaven's sakes, don't worry about trying to do this perfectly because it ain't gonna happen, period. You're gonna make mistakes and as you go along, it's probably not gonna look like the best tree in the world. But the key is, you have to have faith right through to the end. And you'll see why here in just a second. Now already, it's gonna look better. And this would sure be nice if my leather wasn't sliding all around, but that's okay. Okay, here's what we've got so far. Hopefully you can see that. Now, next part, what you have to do from this point is adjust the way that this dumb little tree looks. This kind of gets into a little bit of creativity on your part. You're going to take that same tool and we're going to go down those edges and we're just going to make it look not so stamped. If you try to do the inside of the tree stamping one time at a time, it ain't going to work. You got to do the little tippity tappity tap stuff. Okay, watch. You're just chopping up the outside edge of this tree. You already had a basic outline, but that's all it was, just a basic outline. Now we're going to turn around and do the other side. And again, for heaven's sakes, don't worry about being perfect. It's just not necessary, and actually, it's pretty much unhelpful. Okay, now, eh, take a look at it when, you, when you're done. Make some little adjustments where you don't think it looks right. You can chop this leather up pretty good if you wish to. And that's another thing. If you use good leather, this really works better. If you don't lose, use good leather, this is a lot harder than what you might think. But with good leather, it's fairly easy. Okay, here's what we have so far. So far, so good. Let's see. You know what? We're going to make it look better. This is a large beveler. It's an 896. It's kind of weird shaped, smooth, and I'm going to go right up the side of that tree, and this is where I get rid of a lot of those little marks. And again, don't worry about perfection. As soon as you start worrying about that, then you start to get something that's not very natural looking. Okay, 
That's all we got so far. Now just for the heck of it, I'm going to add another happy little tree there. Just to show you how easy this is. Got my little uh, 976 pointy tool here, pointy beveler, and I'm going to chop down this side, make another outline. There you are. Then I'm going to go down the other side. Obviously, I can't go too far because I'll run into the other dumb tree. So you don't want that. But there you are. There's your outline. Now we're going to do the same thing that we did for the first tree. We're going to fill it in with some little pine tree marks, pine needles, whatever you want to call them, fir tree, uh, evergreen. I don't care. You, you stamp right over all those bevel marks. That's one of the nice things about leather. You can kind of like clay and you can just continually adjust it. Okay, there's step number whatever it is that we've taken. You can see it starts to look better as we go along. Next step, we're going to get rid of the choppy marks with our smooth beveler and see if you you can probably tell that perfection is pretty far away from my mind. Then I'm kind of going to, I'm going to, you can see this little halo around here. I'm going to reduce that with this tool. I'm going to back away with the backgrounder and I'm just going to sort of tap along that edge and it's still going to be there a little bit. But as we go along, you're going to see what happens. Okay, that's not bad, actually. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so now we're going to make things, we're going to take it a little farther. The bottom of the trees can be a little bit of a pain, so I choose to cover them up. This tool is a 933, and it's, it's kind of a camouflage tool, but I'm going to tip it quite a bit. When I tip it, I can tap it and I can just run right across the bottom and I'm basically I'm just chopping up the leather and I'm going to go right across the base of these trees. Now that's pretty easy. But you know if I leave it like that, I mean, it's okay, but it could be better. So what we're going to do is create some irregularities. We're going to go across here and leave this piece of leather because we're going to come back later and do something interesting to it. You know, if you look at grass and brush in the field, uh, it's not regular. It just is what it is. So we're going to make some irregular looking places here. There. And now we have some happy little grass. That's what it looks like. And we're going to make it look a little more real. We're going to take uh, a little pointy, well, let's just use the same one. We're going to use that same 976. This is the tool that's going to give us some depth here because we're going to go along right where we stamped and we're just going to pound the leather down a little bit. And we're going to create some more little irregular marks. And as you go along, you're going to see we're making a whole bunch more marks that we've got to fix. So we're going to get these in here. Then we're going to take our nice big smooth beveler. Go around it. Sort of background a little bit and mat down most of it. Okay, now you can see what our grass looks like. Then we're going to take our swivel knife, which happens to be very sharp, and everybody knows how to sharpen that, so we're not going to bother explaining it. And we're just going to make some random little cuts. And this is going to just hopefully look like some grass that's dead just like you'd see in the wild and it's sticking up and you can make as many of those happy little cuts as you want 
Actually, you can use it to kind of work on that halo a little bit, and then you've got another detail. Now, the nice thing about this is that this is something that's really easily adaptable. What I'm going to do is make a couple of little mountains. When you make mountains, you don't want to make just an up and down V. That doesn't look so good. Give them a little shape, a little contour, and then we'll just take our large beveler again and bevel these down. Again, just to reinforce, the better leather you use here, the better results you're going to have. I know that most of us suffer from attention deficiency, which I do, so I won't take too much longer than with this, but I think you'll get the idea when we're done. Okay, we beveled the outside edge of the mountains. Now we're going to bevel the inside of the mountains. Where do you do that, you say? Anywhere you want. I'm just going to, no swivel cuts, just put some random little marks. And if you do bevel, and don't hesitate to get right up to that tree. Matter of fact, don't bevel on the tree, but don't hesitate to go right up to the edge. Because if you stop too far away from it, Well, let's see, how's that? Okay, step whatever that was, I don't remember. Now you can see what a little beveling does. And after that, you use a modeling tool, and this is kind of a big deal. When you do any scenery type carving or figure type carving, every single square inch of the leather should be touched with a modeling tool. And however you want to touch it is up to you, but you need to, you should, you don't have to, nothing's mandatory in the leather world, but rub it down. Now I'm just going to go to the outside of the pattern here. Rub right over your bevel marks. You can accent your bevel marks if you want. You can just do all kinds of stuff. Maybe I'll make a little rock there. I don't know. Or maybe it's not a rock. Maybe it's just a funny place in the, the dirt. We'll just make a couple of them. And then we're going to get down here in this nice clear spot. And we're going to rough it up a little bit, just like outside. Everything has got contours and nothing is perfect, but the less quote unquote perfect things are, the better they look. And that's just kind of the way things are made. So now we're going to get up here and be done. Uh, try to, when you go over your, your leather with the modeling tool, it's a good thing to keep in mind the contour if you're working with uh, land type of things to keep the contour in mind and work with that, not against it if you can help it. And you can just put all kinds of little funny marks in here and you can define things by pushing, rubbing a little harder, a little pressure here and there. Okay, let's see. That's what we got. Hopefully. Now, if I wanted to be funny, which I love being funny, um, we could put, with just a little bit of effort here, let's see. How about we'll put a deer jumping over a fence? That is, if I have a fence. I have a fence. So we'll just put this deer over here. This is a fence post. Fence post. Not much to it. Then we need a deer. I don't know if I want to use a deer. I want to use horses. I like horses. So we'll just put a horse back over here. And then we'll put uh, maybe a mama horse and a baby horse. We'll put them right there.
Isn't that lovely? Happy little horses. Now we need some real fence. So we're just going to take a swivel knife and do that. We'll put some fence lines in there. If you wanted to, you can make some little X's on these little cuts. That may way it looks like barbed wire. Of course, that's not so hot as far as realism goes, is it? So maybe to make it look a little bit real, you could take one of those tools and make some of that grass right along the fence. Or, if you want, you can take a happy little tool that makes that grass and just go bonk. You can see, boy, you got to be really careful. If you're not sure what you're doing here, if you're not paying attention, not only can you hit yourself in the hand, but you can hit yourself. You don't know where you're going to hit. You can go. If you're not careful, you can stamp right over the bottom of some of these horses' feet. Then I'm going to tip it up, stamp it right next to the fence post. Hmm, let's see. Okay, that's kind of nice. That's what we have so far. Pretty simple. And, you know, not all trees are big. Some trees are small. And I have some. This is the easiest way to make pine trees in the world. This has got four happy little pine trees on it. So we're just going to run, let's see, how can we make this actually work? We'll just go like this. Bang, bang. Right up to the horse. Oh man, we're close. Then we're going to go right behind the horse. Pine trees. Not too bad, but they don't really look all that great. So we want to make them look kind of nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to start up here. And we're going to tip this tool forward so that we're not just bang stamping a big old tree. We're going to tip it forward and just kind of go down like that. And you can probably tell that you don't have to be very careful when you're using that tool. The only thing you got to be careful of is not doing something totally, completely odd. Like don't turn it sideways. Don't, don't do that. That would be bad. Let's see, now, hmm, we got to connect things somehow. Okay, so we'll just connect things here. Let's see if we can't run this mountain into the trees. And we're going to run this one down here a little bit. And then we'll put some more mountains up here. You notice how I make these mountains. You don't have to be very artistic. You just, you just have to, you just have to think a little bit. And be pretty helpful if you decide that you want to do this just watch this a time or two because it'll really help you and you'll see where your improvements can be made okay now we're going to go back tie it all together we're just going to bevel up these mountains here so that they look like they're halfway decent and you can go on and on and on and on with this. We'd want to go back and hit it with our, our modeling tool. Um, you know, let's see. We could put grass out there in the field. We could put another fence post. There's just a lot you can do. But right now, this is enough. So you kind of get the idea. We're going to do a little video later that shows you how to do some, some wallet backs that you can actually make some money with. Thanks. Bye.